on the spot. We get our weekly PlayStation Network update and double demos of ZHP, Unlosing Ranger vs. Dark Death Evil Man, and Ilo Milo. Curtis said gets you started on Gran Turismo 5. Today on the spot. Hello everybody and welcome to Today on the Spot for Saturday, December 4th, 2010 for a second show in a row. It is the dynamic duo of Sean McInnes and Sophia Tong. Sophia, thank you for putting up with me once again. Oh, it's always a pleasure. But do you like that seat more or do you like this one more? I like this seat because I can get away with wearing stupid pants and nobody knows it because I've got this desk right here. For example, you don't know that I'm wearing striped <laughs> clown pants. But, fun fact, I am. Hmm. So, okay. I'm a big fan. Sophia, we've got a great show coming up. We've got a, uh, a nice little trivia prize at the end. We're giving away Magic the Gathering Online right. Station, Station Dollar. Cards. So Station like cards. Okay. In-game currency, there's like a thousand of it, so that's mm -hmm. roughly ten dollars. So but you can spend it. But you can also use it in other Sony Online games, exactly, right? Exactly, like EverQuest. Or... Cool. So, uh, a lot of stuff to uh, keep an eye out for on this episode of the show. But first, as always, let's check in with the GameSpot News Desk. Hey everybody, it's your GameSpot News Update for Saturday, December 4th. I'm Tor Thorsten. The Xbox 360 camera peripheral can see how players are using their bodies, but Namco Bandai wants to use it to see how players are using their minds. The publisher has announced a February 8th North American release date for Body and Brain Connection, with a February debut in Europe, where the game will be called Dr. Kawashima's Body and Brain Exercises. Made with the input of Brain Age co-creator Dr. Ruto Kawashima, Body and Brain Connection includes 20 mini-games designed to test players' math skills, memory, reflexes, and other capabilities. While the game isn't part of Nintendo's Brain Age franchise, it will still assign players a Brain Age and allow them to track their progress. Though U.S. sales figures for Gran Turismo 5 haven't been released yet, the game is already a smash hit in Japan. According to the latest numbers from industry tracking firm Media Create, the game has sold over 430,000 units in Japan in its first week on the market alone. Gran Turismo 5 features close to 1,000 vehicles on more than 70 tracks in 20 plus locations. With a massive budget of 60 million, it also is an official licensee of several major racing circuits, such as NASCAR and the World Rally Championship. The game was originally teased way back at E3 2005 and finally shipped worldwide on November 24th. To find out if it was worth the wait, check out GameSpot's review. Well, that's it, your GameSpot news update for Saturday, December 4th. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. So I know last episode we kind of went around the This Week on Xbox Live, but this time we have an actual This Week on PlayStation Network segment, so let's check it out. This Week on PlayStation Network. In downloadable games, zombies are taking over the world in Dead Nation. A zombie virus has rapidly spread through the human population, leaving it with one hope, you. Among the few capable of fighting back and surviving the mayhem and destruction, your mission is to take on the zombie masses and come out alive. Also out this week is Funky Lab Rat. Play the role of the funkiest of lab rats and escape from the laboratory where you are held captive using your powers. Combine agility and thinking to finish more than 80 levels and regain your freedom. Stop time and modify levels as you please thanks to the PlayStation Move motion controller or a DualShock 3 wireless controller. A demo for Funky Lab Rat is also available. New game add-ons this week include the Trick Shot Pack for Hustle Kings. This pack includes 14 new trick shots for you to learn and master. Next up is DLC Pack 3 for Fist of the North Star. This pack has two new missions that let you fight as Jaggy, the twisted Hokuto fighter impersonating Kenshiro in his original comic book costume. Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light gets the All the Trappings Challenge Pack 1 which includes four new challenge maps filled with hordes of undead enemies and devious traps you must maneuver and exploit to survive. Last up in add-ons, Majin and the Forsaken Kingdom has a special challenge pack. This pack features three new exciting gameplay styles, Battle Challenge, Sneak Challenge, and Puzzle Challenge. Game demos this week include the demo of No Heroes Allowed for the PSP. No Heroes Allowed is the third installment in the tongue-in-cheek humored What Did I Do to Deserve This, My Lord? strategy franchise. This hilarious dungeon builder pits you as the god of destruction, wielding various powered pickaxes to craft the ultimate dungeon in order to protect the evil overlord Batman from the pesky do-gooder heroes. And finally, game videos to check out this week include the story trailer for Dead Nation, 
and the Sackbots featurette for Little Big Planet 2. That's all for this week. Check back next time for the latest this week on PlayStation Network. Hey everyone, so it's daily demo time. I've kicked Sean out of the seat because let's face it, he sucks. I have Brendan Sinclair here instead, who, you know, you're usually not on the show. No. Busy doing news stuff? Normally, yes. Yes. But uh, after Thanksgiving, it slows down a little bit, and um, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you guys might have had something fall through for you. Oh, yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you're actually bringing by this really cool game, which I actually haven't had a chance to see, unfortunately, because it's just been so crazy. What do you have? I have ZHP, Unlosing Ranger versus Dark Death Evil Man. That's the title. Uh, that's the title. It's by Nipponichi Software. Mm -hmm. They did Disgaea. Yeah. Uh, which is an awesome series of like really hardcore tactical strategy role playing games. Yeah. Um, this is not quite not that quite. tactical. I mean, it's got their. <laughs> It's by the same group though. Like NIS America is always bringing these quirky, silly RPGs over to the PSP or the PS3. Yeah. So uh, we've got our Unlosing Ranger here. I named him Homer. Homer. Um, he is, he's supposed to be the undefeated superhero um, that saves the world every every other day, but uh, he's he's not actually. He's not actually? There was superhero. this big battle with Dark Death, the evil man. Yeah. And uh, Unlosing Ranger, the real Unlosing Ranger, mm -hmm. he was in such a hurry to get to the battle, he didn't look both ways before crossing the street, and he got run over by a car and died. Uh-huh. Uh, Homer. Yes was just nearby, and uh, Unlosing Ranger is like, I'm dying, here I bequeath to you the, the Unlosing Ranger belt that will make you the Unlosing Ranger, the superhero. You have to go save the world from Dark Death Evil Man. Okay, so that's how you get stuck with the job. Yeah, and the thing is, um, you don't really have superpowers. Oh, So nice. Dark Death Evil Man, uh, he pretty much destroys you. <laughs> and the entire game is about going through and building yourself from a worthless scrub into the real Unlosing Ranger. Ah. And that doesn't happen easily, and you actually die a lot in the game. <laughs> kind of like the pretty games. It's like NIS America has like the, w the quirkiest, funniest, like... Uh, they yeah. want they want you to be well acquainted with failure before <laughs> right. you taste success. But do you feel frustrated at all or no? No. It's 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 this really weird mindset. Like if you go into it expecting it to be like if other games mm -hmm. where you either win right away or you should reset and redo it. Uh, if you approach it like that, you might get frustrated. But in this one, it's just every time you fail, you get a little bit better. <laughs> so what exactly is happening right now? So what are you doing? This is the the core of the gameplay is going through these dungeons a floor at a time. It's almost like Diablo, mm -hmm. where the dungeons are randomly generated and the actual gameplay in them isn't all that complex. I remember the trailer to this is pretty hilarious if you're like millions of dungeons. Yeah, there's... <laughs> Literally, millions. It's completely randomly, I don't know how, how big the dungeons get, but <laughs> it's, you know... It's just the same like lava cave set, and then the layout of it changes completely every time you go through. And there are these hidden traps that you run into. Yeah. Uh, so the thing is, there's two two power bars at the top there: mm -hmm. hit points and energy. Hit points is what you know from everything. Yeah. Energy is basically like a hunger meter. Every step that you take eats into the hunger meter, and when that when that gets to zero, everything that you do starts sucking away at your hit points. You take more damage. Basically you don't have long to, to live. Yeah. So what you have to do is keep eating. Keep eating. To replenish that. Okay. And then like battle wise, it's just, it seems pretty straightforward. Yep. Oh, there's a sword. Swords are good. See, this is another part of the uh, Diablo style mm -hmm. thing where you're going through and you're getting all kinds of customization options for your ranger. So I'll, I'll outfit him with the iron spear here, which is pretty cool because it lets me hit things from a couple squares away. Here they come. Ah. These uh, highlighted areas on the ground, those are basically the enemy's awareness of you. If you walk in there, they'll turn from neutral to red and they'll start chasing you and trying to kill you. Um, that adds a little bit of a tactical element because mm -hmm. you can, you might be surrounded by enemies, but if you 
carefully negotiate which uh, which squares you step in and which ones you trigger at which time. You can uh, you can actually find your way through some pretty hairy situations without without getting into a lot of fights. Now I know we normally don't do this since the game's already out, but like, what do you love about it? Because I know you've been playing this a lot recently. I love, it's, it's kind of weird because, uh, like I said, the sense of humor mm -hmm. in, in Disgaea and, and other Nipponichi titles are great, and it's very much the same here. Yeah. Um, but it's the way it plays into the story in this that I really love. Yeah. Uh, because it's, it's an entirely, it's an entirely different kind of story than I get from most games. Mm -hmm. they, they tie it in with the gameplay so well every step of the way. Uh, because the, the, the gameplay, themes of the gameplay are basically mm -hmm. um, improving yourself over a long period of time through very, you <laughs> yeah. know, gradual improvements uh, and accepting loss and pulling from each loss the, the, the upside to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that is absolutely what the, the story reflects. Yeah. Because you are this unlosing ranger. Uh, you are this pathetic schlub of a hero <laughs> called Homer. Um, and you you basically just have to have to tough it out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not an incredibly difficult game, but it's it's clear that you are not the biggest baddest guy on the block, and you probably never will be. <laughs> After every after every chapter, you have to go back and fight Dark Death Evil Man. Yeah. And every time he well, I'm not through all the way through the game yet, but each time he beats you down, and it's it's pretty humbling. And then you get the stories of all these people in the world that look at the Unlosing Ranger and how he just got completely destroyed, and they they <laughs> you know they lose faith in the Unlosing Ranger. They they question their own views on life. Yeah. It's, it's almost like Psychonauts in some ways, because mm -hmm. each level takes place inside one of those onlookers' mm -hmm. uh, psyches, basically. And if they've, they have their own issues that you have to go through their, their head and conquer for them, or help them conquer. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I, I really I need to spend more time thinking about this to, <laughs> to put it into words just more succinctly and, and sound less like I'm rambling. No, uh, so you mentioned something about uh, prinnies. There are prinnies in here? There are prinnies in here. If you hold on just a second, I will pick a fight that I can't really win. Uh-huh. Uh, as you see there, I just took a face full of clown uh. burst and uh, <laughs> there we go. So I'm dead oh. and I lose all the money that I had earned and the weapons that I had picked up in that thing, but right. I went up in levels. Okay, uh, so there's a positive. Sort of. <laughs> After every dungeon, win or lose, mm -hmm. uh, your level reverts back to level one. But nice. your base stats and the rate at which you progress mm -hmm. increase. Uh -huh. So when you go to the next level, you'll still be kind of a level one schlub, slightly better. Yes. But as you level up that schlub, you get exponentially better, so that by the time you get to the later yeah. levels, you're really much beefier than you were before. So it's kind of poking fun at those really, really hardcore dungeon crawlers where you die and you lose everything at the start over. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's kind of nice. Some of the dungeons give you options of shortcuts that yeah. you can take. Uh, to get deeper into the dungeon, just step, up, step off a cliff like this mm -hmm. and you'll go down a level. But if you go down too many levels like that, you're not going to have your guy leveled up by the time you get to the boss battle, and you're just going to get destroyed. So it's, okay. it's kind of an inter interesting balance here. Uh, now they've also, this is my home base. Okay, and, I saw a uh, pretty there. I don't have too many facilities here. Mm -hmm. There's a pretty. Um, but everyone here is basically an employee of mine. Yeah. And uh, I, you set up facilities like this as a, a blacksmith that repairs <laughs> your weapons, mm -hmm. because all the weapons and equipment in the game deteriorates over time. So you can pay to, to repair them. Here is my home mm -hmm. uh, with my lovable, lovable wife, wife. Strawl the Prinny, and my single daughter, whose name I won't even try <laughs> to pronounce. Uh, now the, the function of the wife here is when you get into a, into a dungeon, you're running low on food, yeah. you call on your wife and she brings you a sack lunch. <laughs> now, oh, God. And Strahl, I so funny. Strahl's what they give you to start with. Yeah, um, yeah it's a starter wife. Yeah, she's she's okay. Uh, she her stats aren't that great. The, oh, the okay. lunch she brings so you, you could her. be better. 
or you're planning to? Yeah, no, no, I, I, I fired her. Oh, okay. And, and I replaced her with a level 52 death pot. Oh, okay. So you had to get betrothed to like an evil zombie queen, but on the other hand, you know, she brings you a pretty good lunch. Oh. And uh, next well, up, that's important. next up, I am going to replace the single daughter because uh, she she clearly is not very grateful. <laughs> All she does is ask for souvenirs and just express disappointment in you and everything <laughs> that you do. So it looks like this game kind of makes fun of everything. So now that we all know this game is out, so where can we find it and how much? It is, I think it's $30 right now. Yeah. Um, there's an outside chance it's 40 if I'm wrong. Uh, you can get it downloadable on the PlayStation Network, mm -hmm. or you can just get the, the retail version. All right. Get it on a UMD for your PS2. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for coming by and showing us the game. Not a problem. And now on with the rest of our show. All right, so I'm back in my comfy little seat. And you know what, Sean? You don't suck. You actually make a very great host, probably better than me. So I think you deserve that seat. You can say that as much as you want, but you can't take away the heart that lives right here. Ah, that's okay, I forgive you. Anyways, our man Curtis said has a great video feature coming up. He took a look at Gran Turismo 5 to see what sort of tips and hints he can offer to game owners out there. Let's have a look at that right now. Curtis here to give you some hints and tips starting off your Gran Turismo career. When you're starting out, you won't have much cash or a huge selection of cars. You'll want your first starter car to be both affordable and handle well. The Honda Civic Type R is an excellent choice to get easy wins early on. It handles great with good acceleration and the price tag is reasonable. Even if you know how to drive already, take your new car for a few license tests. These will teach you the basics of driving or simply hone your skills. Whether you learn some new pointers or breeze through them, you'll gain experience points to unlock new cars from dealerships and might even win a free car from completing the courses. Once reaching level 4, you should purchase a new Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. For being such a cheap and low level, it has phenomenal performance. Spruce it up even further with some key upgrades. Reduce the car's overall weight with a weight reduction tuning. Both the window weight reduction and carbon hood are cheap ways of adding control without burning your wallet. Improving the engine is always a good choice. And if you have already high performance car, splurge on the ECU tuning. The sports intake manifold trumps the other options, so save up for it. Your best exhaust options are also the most expensive, but it's worth it to upgrade both the titanium racing exhaust and the sports exhaust manifold. Your transmission depends on the car. For most new cars, the 6-speed close ratio will do nicely. However, older model cars from the 60s and 70s will need the full customizable transmission to make use of their lack of gears. Go for the most expensive options for the clutch and flywheel. Other upgrades, such as the torque sensing center differential, are only needed if you have four-wheel drive. For suspension, the height adjustable sports kit is good enough for the most cars. Finally, buy every type of tire and switch them out according to the track. You might be thinking, this sounds like a lot of dough for spending on tuning each car. That's where B-Spec races come in handy. Hire a driver and have them drive courses for you. Normally you want to coach them to drive with neutral emotions. When they become hot, they're prone to make mistakes, while being cold makes them too slow. Tell them to pick up the pace when they turn cold and slow down when they become hot. When they're close to the middle, allow them to maintain their speed. However, with a fully upgraded car, this advice can be thrown out the window, as they'll dominate the track no matter what. Let your B-Spec drivers loose, and you'll have hundreds of thousands of credits in no time. With your pile of cash and accumulated levels, you'll be able to snag unstoppable high-level cars. That about covers it for starting tips for Gran Turismo 5. This is Curtis with GameSpot signing off. All right, guys, you thought that we only had one daily demo on this show, but you were sadly mistaken. We've actually got two. The second one coming courtesy of our very own Tom McShay. Tom, it's a pleasure to have you in the co-host seat. I think this is a happy mistake. It's a happy this, mistake. They shouldn't be sad at all. They get to see it in another game. Exactly, and the other game that we're going to take a look at is an upcoming game called Ilo and Milo, or Ilo Milo, depending on your accent of choice. Tom, what the heck is this game? It is, it's a puzzle game. Okay. And the goal of each, it's a really cute story setup actually. Yeah. It's like there's the friends Elo and Milo, mm -hmm. and they like to have apple tea, but whenever they go to the park every day to have tea, they 
they're not together anymore. Oh, so you no. have to, they're separated at the beginning of every level and you just have to make them meet up. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the, the, the basic gist of the game, is that you're trying to navigate these 3D spaces and reunite these two characters? Yeah, that's the gist. Okay. And what are, what are the sort of complications involved in that? Well, like, in, like right now, I can't walk forward because this, this <laughs> Cause guy... Because you have a demon monster in front of you. <laughs> he just pops up. So then I can, I can just switch, and now I'm controlling oh, blue Oh, so you can switch between the two on the fly. Yeah. Okay. And they have to kind of work cooperatively to... Get through a level. I'm like completely stuck. <laughs> You're not. You've already solved this level. You can't. I know. Be I've already solved this level at one point, but I'm completely stuck. Hang on. All right. This is going to be <laughs> the audience's rare insight into the mind of a genius. There we as go. As Tom McShay attempts to solve this puzzle, so it it looks like the le the game sort of plays with your concept of up and down and left and right by sort of switching the perspective on you? Yeah, like if you have a traditional concept of these things, <laughs> you're going to just gonna be, be... SOL. You're going to be SOL, right, right in the uh, sink. But if you're willing to accept new and modern ideas of up and down, then you will be fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, okay, so those little red things, you walk on them and they sort of switch you over to the next plane. Yeah. And then it looks like you're dropping things, right, as well? Uh, yeah, I picked up a cube that extends okay. in the beginning of the level, so it's, you know, I can now walk different places. I gotta figure so out how to get... So now you're stuck behind the bad man instead of in front of him. Well, there's a way to, like, well, like, check this out. Check out this little move. Okay. So I go like this. Oh, he drops my pet, but then I go and I can walk past. Oh, nice. I know. Now, now I'm gonna meet up with, with, with Milo Nemo? at some point. Milo and Otis? Milo and Otis, yes. Okay. I say walk up that one and then have Milo, or there just have, I, have Ilo is. do all the work. <laughs> Typical <laughs> Milo, just slacking, hanging off by the monster and just what waiting does. for Ilo to do all the hard work. So that was sort of one of the introductory levels. That was chapter one, right? Yes. Let's take a look at one of the, one of the tougher levels to give people a look at uh, how the game gets when it suddenly turns Demon Souls on you. <laughs> Demon Souls, I've never played this level. <laughs> Let's see what happens in this level. It seems, it seems like it's gonna be tough, right? Uh, one would assume, <laughs> I mean, chapter three, that's a higher number than chapter one. Feel free to help me. Okay. Like, that's the job of the host, is to, is to help me. I know, I really like the way this game looks. It's got, it's like, got a beautiful art style. Yeah. Uh, I just asked Carol this question, but am I wrong for just instantly assuming this game was developed in Sweden? <laughs> I don't know why you think it's Sweden. <laughs> it looks Swedish. <laughs> Which is a good thing, because the Swedes make wonderful visual art. That's a compliment, Sweden. Do they, I mean, guerrilla games? I don't know what you're basing <laughs> that on. <laughs> All right, fair point. But, but that game looks good. Yeah. Uh, so so, the, one, so one of the weird things about this is how you get it, uh -huh. how you buy this game. Do you know? Do you know how this works? I've I've heard tales. <laughs> You've heard on the rumors. Internet. I've heard rumors and hearsay, and by that I mean you just explained to me before we started shooting. But let people know how they can uh, get a hold you're, of this game. You're ruining the magic. We didn't talk about this before. Oh, that's right. I just met you. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the the thing is, uh, if you go to like the developer website right now, okay, while you're watching the show. You can get a special code to, that you enter on Xbox Live Arcade, mm -hmm. and then you can download it. Okay. And you, you download the trial. You download the trial, and okay. then for, if you pay 800 space bucks, you get the full game. 800 Steve Ballmer dollars. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> actually, just 800 Microsoft points to clear that up. Uh, so you can't go to the marketplace and look at like what's new and download the full version of this game. You kind of have to use the, 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 the tricks that the developer has provided for you. Yeah, okay. and then in uh, and some... then I think it's going to be part of their um, games of the holiday season promotion or whatever that's yeah, called. What's that game? It's like Winter Solstice Winter... Game Athon. <laughs> Winter... Winter... I think it's something it's like, like that. It's like the the. But it's coming out January fifth. It's the games of Festivus celebration. <laughs> yeah, it's the games of Festivus. That was a reference <laughs> and from I think seventeen it comes years out ago. <laughs> early January. So all right, Tom. Well. Um, this one is probably going to take us quite a bit longer to solve than we have time to show yes. right now. So that gives you a little uh, a little glimpse at how Elo Milo slash Ilo Milo works. We're still not entirely sure how to pronounce the game, but it looks like a lot of fun and it looks like it's super charming as well. That's a cute art style. Mm -hmm. Tom, uh, we, well, we've already cleared up when it comes out, so thanks for coming along. Yes. All right, now on with the rest of the show. <laughs> And that was your look at Ilo Milo. I 
feel compelled to correct Tom on a slight factual error. Guerrilla Games is actually based out of the Netherlands, not Sweden. Apologize to Guerrilla <laughs> Games and Swedish people and Dutch people at large. Okay, well, at least you apologize. Yeah, that's what I do. So now we have our trivia segment. So we're gonna need to bring up this image here that Homer will show any second now. And the question I have for you guys is, which artist's rendition of the Shivan Dragon is a Magic the Gathering Tactics 3D creature based on? So if you have the answer, you can email us at onthespot at gamespot.com or submit your answer in the answer trivia module on the side of the page. Well, folks, it's that time again. We've reached the end of another great episode of Today on the Spot. But before we go, it bears mentioning that we've got our Game of the Year awards coming up yes. over the subsequent weeks. Yes, also end of the year, we've been debating, I guess you could say, if you watch our teaser trailer, we have really adamantly argued about what games should be nominated. We, we definitely did. You left Chris in the hospital for a period of time. Not, not, not many people know about that, but... Hey, uh, he deserved it. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> went into that feature, so make sure to keep an eye out for it. So again, thanks for watching, guys. I'm Sean McInnes. I'm Sophia Tong. So long, everybody. Poor Chris. <laughs> it's that time of year again, where GameSpot editors get together and decide which games deserve an award. Check our site to find out when the nominees will appear, and we'll roll out the winner soon after. Because there are so many great games out there, it can be hard to figure out what to buy for a loved one. Take a look at GameSpot's 2010 Holiday Gift Guide, where we'll show you the latest and greatest and all the must-haves for this holiday season.